Translation is the process of polymerization of amino acids to form a polypeptide. The sequence in which polypeptides will be added is provided by the messenger RNA which represents the DNA. So since the DNA does not itself come out into the cytoplasm, it sends its representative that is messenger RNA with the code to form the proteins or polypeptides. I hope you recall that polypeptides are formed by amino acids. These amino acids are joined by bonds known as peptide bonds. The peptide bond formation requires the messenger RNA which will tell the sequence in which the amino acids will have to be added. It will require the amino acids, then ribosomes. These are the protein synthesizing machinery of the cell. This is the site or the cell organelle where these amino acids will be added to form the polypeptide and of course for any reaction to occur energy is required. As in all processes in the living system the energy is provided by ATP. Since energy is the primary need of peptide bond formation the first step is activation of amino acid in the presence of ATP. Now these amino acids are present scattered in the cytoplasm and are brought to ribosomes by transfer RNA. So along with this step of energizing the amino acid that is adding ATP, one more process takes place that is linking of amino acids to their specific or related transfer RNA. Now this process is known as charging of tRNA or amino acylation of tRNA. Now if two such charged tRNAs are brought together close enough, the formation of peptide bond between them would be energetically favorable because they already have the energy. And if you can manage a catalyst, this process would occur even faster. The cellular factory responsible for protein synthesis is the ribosome. The ribosome is made of RNAs and around 80 different proteins. Now the RNA present here are part of the structure of ribosome. So they are known as structural RNA or ribosomal RNA. As you must recall, ribosome is made of two subunits. So these RNA and proteins are arranged in two subunits, one large and one small. These two subunits are present separately in the cytoplasm when they are not involved in protein synthesis. That is when they are idle or not functioning. When the small subunit encounters or meets an mRNA, an mRNA is delivered into the cytoplasm, it first goes and joins with the small subunit. The moment the small subunit joins with this messenger RNA, the process of translation has to begin. And so the large subunit comes and join with the smaller subunit, which already has the messenger RNA and the assembly of ribosome is complete. And this is the step two of the process of translation that is assembly of protein synthesis machinery. Now the ribosome performs two roles. The first role is that it provides the site of protein synthesis and the second it acts as a catalyst for peptide bond formation. In the beginning of the lesson we had studied that sometimes RNA also acts as an enzyme and that is known as ribozyme. So 23SR RNA in bacteria has been identified to act as a catalyst for accelerating the process of polypeptide synthesis. So it is a ribozyme. So with this we have completed the assembly of protein synthesis machinery. Now let's see the structure of ribosomes once again. The ribosome, the large subunit and the small subunit. There are two sites in the large subunit, the A site and the P site. 
the a site is where the amino acids are delivered by transfer rna so amino acids which are brought by transfer rna as per the specific codone on messenger rna joins at the a site by complementary base pairing p site is where the already formed peptide chain is located so if translation is taking place every time a new amino acid is being delivered by transfer rna and every time this new amino acid comes and joins at the a site some of the peptide chain must already be formed that peptide chain is present at the p site now once this happens the peptide chain at the p site and the amino acid at the a site these two come so close together that the formation of peptide bond takes place they are already energized so this is energetically favorable reaction a peptide bond is formed between the incoming amino acid and the already present peptide chain and the ribosome acts as a catalyst in this process now here we are assuming that the a certain length of peptide chain is already formed but if there is the process is just starting that is the first or the initiator amino acid is coming and joining the ribosome then p site would be empty there would be no pre formed peptide chain at the p site so what will happen in that case the first amino acid or the initiator methionine will not join at the a site it will join at the p site instead and this will wait for the next amino acid to be delivered at a site for the first peptide bond formation now as the amino acids are added as per the messenger rna code the ribosome keeps moving to the next codon remember it is not the rna that moves but the ribosome assembly which moves to the next codon on messenger rna translational unit here is the messenger rna sequence but if a messenger rna is to act as a translational unit it is supposed to make a polypeptide it should have a few sequences it should have a start codon in the beginning aug and now you know why aug or the special methionine is important it should have a stop codon at the end uaa uag or uga then it should also have some untranslated regions or utrs the utrs are some additional sequences that are not translated but they are required for efficient translation process they are present both at 5 prime end that is before the start of the codon and at 3 prime end that is after the stop codon now let's just summarize the next 3 4 5 steps of translation we have already covered most of them the first step is initiation ribosome binds to messenger rna at the start codon and then transfer rna bound to methionine is delivered at the p site the next step is elongation the ribosome proceeds to the next code on messenger rna as the next code as per the next code the specific trna brings along the amino acid and binds it to the messenger rna in the correct sequence this binding occurs by forming complementary base pairing with the trna anticodon we saw that the structure of trna has an amino acid arm and the anticodon arm so at the anticodon the complementary base pairing takes place then as this new amino acid is delivered the peptide bond is formed between the amino acid at the p site and the new amino acid at the a site now ribosome keeps on moving from one codon to the next one along the mrna and keeps on adding new amino acid one by one and a polypeptide is formed this polypeptide will have the amino acid in the sequence as it was coded by the dna and as the message was brought by the messenger rna finally 
if the mr if the ribosome comes across a stop codon on the mrna a release factor binds to the stop codon it stops the process of translation and as the process is stopped the complete polypeptide is released from the ribosome once the process is done the large subunit and the small subunit again separate and the messenger rna if more copies are required goes on otherwise this is also degraded in the cytoplasm now these are your questions for practice i hope you are able to solve these after watching the video here you just have to make a flow chart or an information sheet based on whatever we have done in this video